Miami game. Uh, they were fully safety cut due to the mayor. We are to explain this for the mayor, who are made of the least they acquire choices in jail. We will be the mayor in the vehicles. An intro evaluatory day. I then quit a TV card, you will to the mayor. Spera in Dale, one of our two concrete were early salutary voters made at Dale's Mayor's. See to Erat in Principio and look at Center, and in Secular Secular Room Army. I then quit a TV card, you will to the mayor.
Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto the governors, as unto them that are sent by him. They are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. It is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free. Do not use your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. Honor all men and love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the King. Verbum Domini.
Dominus Hobbies Gold, Echoing Spirit to the world, Granting some given gems, Taking your honor, Gloria to me, Domine. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. And then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father. What is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of what I said? A little while ye shall not see me, and again a little while ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye shall weep and love her. But the world shall rejoice. Ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. Ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy is something that no man can take from you. Lost in me,
Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 22, we hear the words of Jesus. And you now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man takes from you. You now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man takes from you. In the Gospel of John, he records the words of Jesus the I wills. After God had wrought a great deliverance for Israel by bringing them out of the house of bondage, they did not immediately enter into the land which he had promised to their fathers, but wandered out of the way in the wilderness and were variously tempted and distressed in like manner. After God has delivered them that fear him from the bondage of sin and Satan, after they are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus, yet not many of them immediately enter into the rest which remaineth for the people of God. The greater part of them wander, more or less, out of the good way into which he hath brought them. They come, as it were, into a waste and howling desert, where they are variously tempted and tormented. And this, some in allusion to the case of the Israelites have termed a wilderness state. Certain it is that the condition wherein these are has a right, the tenderest compassion. They labor under an evil and sore disease the one that is not commonly understood. And for this very reason, it is the more difficult for them to find a remedy. 
being in darkness themselves, they cannot be supposed to understand the nature of their own disorder. And who are their brethren? Perhaps their teachers know either what their sickness is or how to heal it. So much the more need there is to inquire. First, what is the nature of this disease? And secondly, what is the cause? And third, what is the cure of it? And first, what is the nature of this disease into which so many fall after they have believed? Wherein does it properly consist? And what are the genuine symptoms of it? It properly consists in the loss of that faith which God once wrought in the heart. They that are in the wilderness have not now that divine evidence, that satisfactory conviction of things not seen, which they once enjoyed. They have not now the inward demonstration of the Spirit of God, which before enabled each of them to say, the life I live, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The light of heaven does not now shine in their hearts, nor do they see him that is invisible. But darkness is again on the face of their souls and blindness on the eyes of their understanding. The Spirit, the Spirit of God, no longer witnesses with their spirit that they are the children of God. Neither does he continue as the Spirit and sons and daughters of adoption crying in their hearts, Abba, Father. They have not now a sure trust in his love and a liberty of approaching him with holy boldness. For as Paul says, we must come before his throne crying, Abba, Father. And though we cry out like Job in our wilderness, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Oftentimes, because of our wilderness, because of our darkness, because of our sin and the joy of the Lord not living in us, we struggle. We struggle to say, though he slay me, but when the power of God once lived in us, we were able to say with unspeakable joy, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. When the storms of life assails, when tribulations and trials, the vicissitudes of life seem to overtake the soul that is in the wilderness. If they have not lost their joy, they will be able to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But the soul that is in darkness can no longer say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. It is no more the language of their heart. It is not the spiritual language of their souls. They no longer can speak the principles of God. For the natural man cannot comprehend the things that are spiritually understood. It demands a life of resurrection. It demands a life to be born again. St. Paul says in Colossians 3, if you then be risen with Christ, 
if we are raised in Christ in baptism, we are to seek now those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And then he warns us, set your affections now. What should our affections be? Not on things that are temporal, not on things that are earthly, for they are fleeting and they pass away. Set your affections on things above. Where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. Putting off the old man and his deeds. And putting on Christ. Which is renewed in the image of him who created us. And then very softly. In the dimness of the night, when it's cold and the wild of the hour has beckoned upon us, we will be able to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Jesus, I trust in you. It is the language of the soul who has moved from darkness into that marvelous light. It is the language of that soul who has somewhat expired within themselves as if to give up. But that soul won't give up. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And because the joy that he gives no man can take away. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Is the language of the soul that languishes for the deep grace of God, for a closer walk with him, for desire to love him more affectionately, to have a personal relationship with him who is who was and who is to come, our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Will that be your language? Will you still look to the Lord, the author, and the perfecter of your faith in the time of your trial? For many, for many are shown of their strength. Many have lost their strength. The vicissitudes of life have come upon them. And now the seed that should have grown is now choked by the cares of this world. The sower went out to sow. Some seed fell upon good ground. Other seed fell upon stony ground. When the sun began to beat down upon that seed, that seed had no growth. Some seed fell upon thorns and thistles. And when life began to come in on them, they were choked and they could not cry, though he slay me. Yet will I serve him. The Lord is calling us, each and every one of us, to empty our souls out to him. Do not become feeble-minded, even as other men are. But learn how to trust him, even in your darkest Hence, secondly, proceeds the loss of love. We cannot have joy. We cannot understand the joy of the Lord, the excitement of the Lord, the ecstatic love that causes one to move from one degree to another. Because the more we love, the more we 
are drawn to him. The less we love, the more we move away from him. For our Lord said, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. I will come and make my abode with you. The Lord wants to be near all of us. He wants to have a relationship with all of us. Many souls have become feeble-minded, shorn of their strength. We rely so much on our own strength. David said, my help comes from the Lord. He made the heaven yes. and the earth. The Lord is the strength of your life. Whom shall I fear? Though an host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not become weary. They shall walk and not faint. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For it is God that even in the midst of every circumstance, trial and tribulation in our lives, that God is saying, Oh, I am with you. Oh. Trust him even in the dark, the darkest moments of your lives. When one loses love, one becomes cold. When one loses love, they're no longer human. When one loses love, they no longer have a sense of the divine order. Oh, God is love. You see, God is love. And that love sheds abroad. It fills the atmosphere. It touches hearts. Where there is love, there is God. Where there is God, there is love. The love of God should move us because of all that we know that God has done for us. We cannot do anything in and of ourselves. It is the grace of God that has enabled us to move and to have our whole being. And in that, we are here today in this mass because God, in his infinite love, has allowed us to be here. Yes. Amen. Where would you and I be if it were not for the Lord? Lord amen. Many of us would have completely lost our mind yes. if God had not been with yes. us. Yes. Many of tears have been shed. Yes. Many of trials have been fought. You can say, through all of this, yes. I've learned to, tr to trust Lord in mercy. Jesus. Yes, I've yes. learned to trust in God. Yes. Why? Because love keeps us healthy. Where there's no love, there is no goodness. Where there is no love, one fails. Love lifts Love 
lifts us to the cross. Love brings us to the cross. Love shows us the cross. Love keeps us beneath the cross. Mm -hmm. Love helps us to embrace the cross. Mm -hmm. Love helps us carry our crosses. Love enables us to lift yeah. our hearts to the grandeur of God, even when we are in our wilderness. Mm -hmm. The dark night of every soul is only meant to try us, to bring us to God even more. From my own experience, it is in the darkest moments there we find God. That's a paradox. We find God. Even in tragedy, yes. even when things seem to be very, very dark, God enters in time for us in time, and He works it out for us in time. Where is your love? Love covers it all. Love lifts us to Christ. We cannot but rise when we have love. We fall when we have no love. So, secondly, proceeds the loss of love, which cannot but rise or fall at the same time and in the same proportion with true living faith. Accordingly, they that are deprived of their faith are deprived of the love of God also. When you cannot practice your faith, you cannot have God. When we are deprived of our faith, it is almost like Suffering from hunger. I love the Lord. Because he heard my cry. Ah, and he pitied every groan. Long as I live. While trouble rises. I hasten through the throne. Bread of heaven. Feed me. Till I want no more. Yeah. It is when we feed on him that we receive what we need. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He that eats my flesh shall have life in them. When we are robbed of our faith, when we can no longer practice our faith, we can no longer have God's love. Those souls who have lost love, they cannot now say, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love you, like Peter said. They are not now happy in God as everyone is that truly loves him. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on Jesus. And my God, oh happy day, oh happy day, mm. <coughs> when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray, oh happy day. The ointment of love comes because of our happiness in him. Many are not happy in God, but many are happy in God. And those who are happy in God wonder why those who wander aimlessly don't want the love of God. 
It saddens the heart who loves God to see souls in utter destruction. Going down the tomb. And when you and I smell the odor of his ointment, it draws us. The love of God is like perfume. When a lady puts perfume on, men are drawn. <laughs> so it is with the ointment, the perfume of God. Souls are drawn to God, to the odor of holiness, the sweet smelling silver. Once these souls who love God, all their desire was unto him and to the remembrance of his name. But now even their desires are cold and dead, if not utterly extinguished. Souls who loved him do not love him anymore. Revelation chapter 2 says, And unto the church of Ephesus I write, You loved me once, but you don't love me like you used to love me. Return back to me, or I will extinguish the candle and remove the light from you. Many souls are experiencing a dark night. Your love has grown cold, not only for God, but for your neighbor. Our Lord said, love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes, yes. They have not now that zeal for the souls of men. You know, when you and I first came to Christ, when we first understood him, when we were given revelation and knowledge of him, we had such zeal for the souls of men, that longing after their welfare, that fervent, restless, active desiring of their being reconciled to God. These souls do not feel those bowels of mercy for the sheep that are lost because you have lost love, love for God. When we have become cold and no longer feel and sense the presence of God, we become cold for souls and we no longer look after souls. We have grown cold in our love and we have grown cold in the love of our neighbor. So we have no longer the zeal for the souls of men, that longing after their welfare, that fervent, restless, active desire of their being reconciled to God. They do not feel those bowels of mercies for the sheep that are lost, that tender compassion for the ignorant and them that are out of the way. Once they were gentle toward all men, meekly instructing such as oppose the truth. And the scripture says, if any was overtaken in a fault, we would restore such as one in the spirit of meekness. But after a suspense, perhaps of many days, anger begins to regain its power. Yes. And impatience thrusts sore at them that they may fall. And it is well if they are not sometimes driven even to render evil for evil and railing for railing. In consequence of the loss of faith and love follows, thirdly, 
The loss of joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. For if the loving consciousness of pardon be no more, the joy resulting therefrom cannot remain. If the Spirit does not witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, the joy that flowed from the inward witness must also be at an end. And in like manner, they who once rejoiced with joy unspeakable are deprived of joy it that once they had as also that which resulted from a consciousness of the love of God then shed abroad in their hearts. For the cause being removed, so is the effect. The fountain being dammed up, those living waters spring no more to refresh the thirsty soul. With loss of faith and love and joy, there's also joy. Fourthly, the loss of that peace which once passed all understanding. That sweet tranquility of mind, that composure of spirit is gone. Painful doubts remain. Doubt whether we ever did and perhaps whether we ever shall believe. We begin to doubt whether we ever did find in our hearts the real testimony of the spirit whether we did not rather deceive our own souls and make the voice of nature for the voice of God. Ah. And perhaps whether we shall ever hear his voice and find favor in his sight. And these doubts are again joined with servile fear. With that fear which hath torment. We fear the wrath of God. Even as before we believed, we fear lest we should be cast out of his presence and thence sink again into the fear of death from which we were before wholly delivered. But even this is not all. For loss of peace is accompanied with loss of power. We know everyone who has peace with God. We understand everyone who has joy, unspeakable joy, peace of God. We know them because it is through Jesus Christ that that soul who has the joy and the peace of God, then that soul will have power over sin. But whenever the soul loses the peace of God, he loses also the power over sin. While that peace remains, power also remains. Even over the besetting sin, whether it were the sin of his nature, his constitution, of his education, or that of his profession. Yes, and over those evil tempers and desires which till then he could not conquer. Sin had then no more dominion over him, but he had now no more dominion over sin. He may struggle indeed, but he cannot overcome. The crown has fallen from his head. His enemies again prevail over him and more or less bring him back into bondage. The glory, the Shekinah glory is departed from his house. That is why many souls cannot smile, cannot be happy, cannot have joy because our Lord is not there. There is no power. And when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power. Power is the Greek word dunamis. That power that, that will make you praise God even in the wilderness. Look at your neighbor and say, praise God even in the wilderness. God, even, in even in the darkest moment yes. of your life, mm. you still praise God because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. 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 Where is that power? 
Where is that strength? Where has it gone? Sin has erased it. Sin for the wages of sin is death. But God's gift to us today is love, eternal life. The payment of our sin is death. It simply means annihilation. God moves away. He gives us our freedom because we are free will agents. God does not enter into our cosmos unless we allow him to. He will not force himself into the temple. He will not force himself upon a soul in the third chapter of Revelation, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If any man hear my voice and he opens the door of his heart, then I will come in. I'll dwell with him. I'll be with him. As the prophet says, when we go through the water and through the flood, through the storms, he says, I'll be with you. The waters will not overtake you. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith. In his excellent word, what more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus has fled. Fear not, little flock. Our Lord is with us. Yes, he is. And when we know He is with us, we can cry with the great hymn writer, My hope yes. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Listen, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. On oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Because when you stand on Christ, nothing else really matters. Won't he hold you? Won't he undergird you? Won't he strengthen you? How many been through the fire and have come out because it is God that has brought you out? It is the power of the Holy Spirit that enables you to be able to stand when everything around you is falling. My flock of God, do not lose hope, for the shepherd of our souls is with us. Do not lose hope, for your hope is in him who was and who is to come, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. When you would have lost your mind, God yes, stepped in yes, he did. and said, it's yes, all right. <laughs> Amen. Peace Jesus. be still. Mm. The peace of God, oh, God. which oh, passes God. all understanding, yes. shall keep your heart and your mind mm. in the knowledge of God. He said that he will keep you in perfect peace. Look at your neighbor and say, God said he'll keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on Yes, sir. There are times when it seems like he's not there. 
but he's there. Yes, he I is. told you this last week and the week before. God is there. Yes. Yes. Do not lose hope. Even when the clouds hang over you, do not lose your faith. Faith is the substance of things what? And evidence of the things which are not seen with the natural eyes. I come to him. I believe in him. I trust in him. Jesus, I trust in you. I trust you to help me in my struggle. Yes, you may struggle indeed. But those who have lost love cannot overcome crown is falling from the head. His enemies again prevail over him. The glory is departed from many souls. Many souls have lost Jesus, the lover of my soul, let me to that bosom rise while the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high. soul that is anchored in God will never be forsaken. The soul who has lost God has lost hope will not rise. When you are at the end of your rope. Do not give up. As I've said to you oftentimes, you tie the knot and hang on because help is coming. God knows what is in us. He knows our weakness. He knows our faults. He knows our failures, and yet he still helps us. Yes, he does. Many of you have fallen from grace, but the invitation is given to you today. Come back. Come to me. He that cometh to me. I will in no way cast them out. God loves all of us. And it is the will of God that we be saved. Saved from him. Sin should have no more dominion over you. Do not give in to your struggles. Do not let your enemies discourage you. Do not go back into bondage. 
Ask God to help you and free you from bondage. And ask Him, bring back the glory that has departed from this house, this temple. For the glory of the Lord is in His holy temple. And when the glory of the Lord is in the temple, we then have that solace. But the Lord, as the prophet Habakkuk says, is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Yes. Repent, come back, he will receive us. A little while, and I will be with you. A little while, I will leave you. Yet a little while, I will come back. And the joy that I give you, the joy that will come to you, no man can take away. The joy that cries will give you it. Amen. Amen. Jesus love my soul let me to Thy bosom fly while the near waters roll, while the tempest is high. Hide me, O oh, my Savior, hide till the storm. Of life is past, safe into thy haven, God. Oh, receive my soul at last.
Vestrum, Sacrificium Acceptabilum, Fiat Abodeum Patrio Onnipotentum. Sushitia Domus Sacrificium de Mindus Suis, et Laudum et Gloriam Nomini Suis, Adutinatum Corpore Nostrum, Posiusque Ecclesiae Suis Sancte. Oremus. Per omnia secula, secula horum. Amen. Dominus vobis cum. E cum spiritu tuo. Dosam corda. Avemus ar dominum. Gratias aga.
Tad in Sankt Josef, the Yiddish Marcus Hutz. The Yvatus of the Sichetan, I think they have Marcus Hutz, the Ten, to be gratis. Benedictus, Fijit, the Sight of the Superstitions. Archi, the Mund, Exocorbus. Hope, Est, Anum, Corpus, Mail. Hic es an Kalik Sanglis me, novi et attorney testamenti, mysterium fidei, qui provodis et promotis upon nature in remissionem peccatorum. Amen.
Dalipso, el cum ipso, el ipso, et tibi deo patria omnipotenti, in unitati spiritu sancti, omnes honor et gloria. Per omnia secula, secula harum. Amen. O Reus, qui shepita salitaribus moniti, et divino institucione formati, al deemus dicere. Pater noster, Qui es in celis, sancti vice tor noem tuam. Aveniat regnum tuam, iat voluntas tuam, sicud in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum, da nobis hodie, et dimiti nobis debita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Sed libera nos amado, Et omnia secula, secula horum. Amen. Pax Domini, sit semper, don't be his cum. Et cum spiritu tuo.
Amen. Amen. The omnipotenti, the adoration of the Virgin, the omnipotent archangel, the adoration of Baptiste, Sancti Apostoli Spiritu et Paolo, omnipotent Sancti Father Intissime, we have become the newest constellation of verbo et opere, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, give your praise to the adoration of the Virgin. The Alpha and Gamma Archangel, the Alpha and Yohan Baptista, Santos Apostolos Petrum et Paulum, Lomino Santos Pablo Mentissime, Aurora and Romeo Dominum Deum Nostrum. Is it the Alpha and Vestus in the Potence Deus, and the Vices Begatus Vestus be the Gervas Salvita in our time? Amen. In Dodge, Absolutionum, and the Missionum Peccatorium, the Storium Shukum. 
Amis Dei, Ece Amis Dei, Pitoni Picatu.
Dominus Vobis Quo, et al Spiritu Tuo. Oremus. Sacramenta, Que Subsimus, Que Simus Dom, et Spiritiam, Nos Intra, Alimentis et Cupiali, to the angel of the Lord, nostrum Jesus Christ, and the Lord of the Lord, we take and give the reign of the Lord, the Spirit of the Sancti Dei, per omnia secula secula.
Dominus Vabiscum, Exultum, 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 Amen. Before we leave today, on last Sunday, our Sunday offerings were a little low. And I'm going to ask today that we offer another offering as a sacrifice to the Lord for the needs of the church. There are times when we have low Sundays. Maybe no fall of ours. Many of you give and you give from the heart. And the church and its leadership, we are grateful for your giving. But when the church is in need, we ask. Our Lord has asked us to ask, and it will be given to us. So, I ask that if you have it, you give something extra today for the Lord. You dig deep, and you do that for the cause of Christ and the needs of his church, that we come behind in nothing. And yesterday, we were able to raise approximately $1,489. Thank you, Lord. Everybody's birthday. And uh, it might be more, but what came in yesterday, there are people that do have more to return. Turn in. We want to thank all of you Amen. for Amen. your time, for your gifts, for this ticket sales, and on uh, next year we have the same thing. Maybe every three months having everybody's birthday, so we only <laughs> celebrate three months. Yeah. <laughs> Too much food. <laughs> I saw so much food. I didn't want to eat too much. <laughs> It was a lot of food. Yeah. All of the tables had food. Yeah. And it makes us big. <laughs> so, I enjoyed myself very much on yesterday. Amen. With the youth and the children, and all of you, very happy. Amen. Why is it that we get happy when we see food? <laughs> I think that's why when the Lord fed the 5,000, they were happy. The Lord always feeds us. And he makes us happy. I'd like to say to all of our priests in our mission churches throughout the world, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And do not fear. The shepherd of our souls, the bishop of our souls is with us. You too will have your trials. Mm -hmm. As we all are called to bear our cross. But our Lord is with us. I encourage all of my sons in all of our churches and missions throughout the world. To be faithful to God. Wait. And to your priesthood, to your priesthood, and to the people entrusted to your care. We pray for those souls in Boston. As we must realize that these things can come to our own city, our own place where we work. The place of government, the place where there's commerce, in our schools. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, and St. Michael the Archangel will protect us all from the hands of those who do evil. Yes. And though evil rages, God is still with us, and he promised never to leave us. We pray for all of those mothers and fathers who lost sons and daughters in Boston. And we pray, God have mercy on the soul of that young man 
Because he's still a soul yes. who needs the salvation of the Lord. Yes. We, probably many of us, feel that he should be killed or destroyed. That is in the hands of God. Yes. We are to pray for his soul. It might be your son, it might be your daughter one day. And all of us need salvation. Our Lord on the cross said to the thief who had done so bad. He had done many sins. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So no matter what anyone has done, there's always a chance of salvation. That's how God works. Even in all of this, God is here. And God said to his son Jesus, to the thief on the cross, this day, you will be with me in paradise. That's how God is. He's merciful. The mercy of God is greater than our sins. And so, neither do we condone what these two young boys have done. But there are so many dysfunctional young people. And there are the dysfunctional old people. <laughs> Oldness sometimes gets you dysfunctional. <laughs> We should season and age. Yes, yes. But some of us become very foolish yes. as we grow older. Mm. We, should, we should be seasoned with God mm -hmm. and His grace. So let us pray for our children and our young people. It's so good to have the young people yes. who, who love the Lord. Yes. You should be so happy yes. that they're in church. Yes. 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 Thank you, God. On, yes. on Friday, it was 420. Friday. I said to the ladies yesterday, the young people, they have this code, 420 means the drug day. Mm -hmm. All day you experience drugs. Let's pray for the children. Let's pray for the young people that they are not led into these temptations. That they will soon come to the heart of truth. Once again, to our priests, be faithful to the Lord. The Lord is with you. And we are with you in prayer and in the demonstration of the power of God. Amen.